Hi, my name is Amedeo Beretta, the channel is Animation Pandemic and this is a video feedback on animation that was sent to me. We are looking at a blocking of a run of an anthropomorphic character. We are trying to understand if the poses are working and if it makes sense to transition to spline. Now, the first thing that I notice is that we don't have the views to judge whether we could go into splining because we are mainly evaluating the run from the side view. So we are unable to see if the arcs are tracked and if the poses work in 3D. They might work, they might not work, but without seeing the other views, it becomes fairly difficult to understand what goes on in here. The other thing I noticed immediately was that the run seems to go between 1 and 23. This run is running more or less at the same speed of a walk, which is a bit strange. So it will look more like a, a slow jogging rather than a run. This might be a bit too slow as a run. Speaking of the poses in here, this is the contact pose. I think you could maybe overstretch the leg a bit more forward for the contact leg. I'm not quite sure which leg is forward in here. I mean, I'm not sure this is the left leg or the right leg so when you submit play blasts for feedback it's going to be easier to assess them if it's easier to understand which side of the character we are looking at because right now it's very difficult to discern the left from the right another thing that i'm noticing is that we have a pose on three which seems like the down and then on four the tail moves so that probably in here you have some problems as in maybe the tail key is on frame four but not on frame five there is some offset there which might not be a problem might be a problem we never know until you do splining for blocking purposes if you see this in step the tail is going to look weird because it's moving at a different pace and it doesn't seem to react to the rest of the motion so make sure that you have for one key for every control for every pose so let's talk about the key poses. So we have the down, more or less could work. I'm going to go back to this later maybe. And then we have this, this would be the kickoff pose. And then we would have the, the up pose in here. So this would be the up pose. And then we have, this would be the other contact pose. The other contact pose happens at frame 12. So again, this looks like the timing of a walk rather than a run. I think you could have the, the up happening maybe one frame earlier and staying there maybe for a couple of frames and then after a couple of frames you could have the next contact. That would make the run work a, a lot faster I think or feel a lot faster than it is now. For the down, the, the shape of this leg moving forward which I assume is probably the right leg, I think it's a bit strange. I think maybe you could you could try and give us a shape like this one, for instance, which looks a bit more natural. And as you translate forward in what seems to be the kickoff, maybe you could bend back a bit the tip of the pole there. And I think you could end up having a bit more tension on the back leg there so that it's a bit straighter. And similarly for the up pose, it's a bit strange to see this perfectly straight line. This should be already bending the tiny bit and the one which is forward probably should be bent down as well. For the contact, I wouldn't rotate the body and the head so forward, that much forward, because it feels like both the body and the head are rotating together with the body rolling down. So it doesn't feel like the body is a flexible L element in there. I would in fact have the hip move down at a faster speed than the rest of the body. So in fact, the head would be probably somewhere over, over here. And then coming the down, you would have the head moving forward as opposed to, to backward in the down. If this at 12 is the contact, yes, you would have the head moving forward, you see, as it goes to the down as opposed to the opposite. I, I think it's it will be a bit difficult for the head to move back in the down there, but you never know. But I feel like it would be easier for even to animate to have the, the head a bit to the back on 12 and even on the, on the up pose and then go down in the down pose. And then as you kick off, maybe you could push even, even more forward with the, with the spine and have the head even more forward so that eventually so that eventually we will have this kind of motion. If you track the head, you see that's the motion. And if you see the head now that I'm doing, the head that I'm doing now follows this kind of arc. The head that you have in your animation is it's a bit of a more confusing arc. It seems like it's going back, up, back. So your head is doing this 
and then down. So he's doing back, up, back, and then down, and then stays. So you have a very confusing arc right now, while I think with my approach you would have a, a much neater arc. As a first step in here, it would make sense to see the four views of the animation. It would make sense to see the timing, which is a bit tighter, a bit shorter, because right now this is fairly slow. I would have the kickoff on maybe five and then the up on seven, maybe a, another up on nine, so a, a moving hold of the up, on the up, and then and on 11 I would be down on the floor again with the contact. That should make the animation a bit tighter, a bit more like a run. Then I would figure out the legs as I designed earlier on and I would make sure that the body is falling down more on the down and a bit on the kickoff rather than already on the contact because otherwise we will have both the leg and the, and the body falling down on the contact that will look a bit strange. And also I would make sure you see that the head has some sort of arc in there and I would also track the arcs for the arms What's strange in here with the right arm, arm, for instance, is that you go from extended on eight here to just moving the elbow forward. I would expect to have a tiny bit of movement in the in the shoulder as well forward on frame 12. Also, I would expect the chest to twist as the arms are swinging. And then as a the last thing, we will see the tail. Right now, I'm not even checking the tail because this is fairly rough and it wouldn't make sense to concentrate on the tail. And maybe next time, try to put a shader on this that doesn't gray everything out because this makes it a lot harder to evaluate the silhouette. But yeah, there are there are poses in here that you could use to move forward. You just need to stop the timing a bit better, see other views, fix the shading and track the arcs. So I hope this helps. And remember, if you are a student at one of the schools I am currently teaching, at you will send me your animation for free and receive video feedback as part of my teaching if you're not a student at one of the schools I'm teaching at right now you can still receive feedback by becoming a patreon so head over to my patreon page to learn more have fun bye